All right, in this video, let's look at uh, the normal distribution. Uh, we're going to use Excel to find the area under the normal distribution curve. Okay, so we have here in the first example I'm going to do, they give us the Z score, and we're going to calculate the area under the Z scores for the standard normal curve. And then in the second example we have uh, we're going to have a another problem where we're going to find the probabilities and if you notice in this problem they don't give us a z-score they give us the the x values so we'll have to convert it to a z-score and then I'll also show you uh, converting it to a z-score and Excel has a formula that does that for you all right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first one we have is we have let Z be a standard normal uh, random variable and calculate the following areas under the standard normal curve. All right, so let's get this. All right, so first let's just draw the curve. And we know that the standard normal curve has a mean of mu equal zero, has a mean of zero. And we want to find the area under the curve to the left of z equals 1.23. All right, so if the mean here is zero, then a z-score of 1.23, we'll just draw it out here, okay, and we're looking for the area to the left. So we're looking for this area here under the curve. Now what Excel does is whatever z-score you enter, it gives you the area to the left of that z-score. Okay. So let's look at how we calculate this. All right. All right. So, what we're going to do is come up here and we're going to insert a function, okay? And we're going to go to the, well, let's see if we can find it. And here, let me see, here it is, norm.s.dist. Norm okay, this is the function you use when they give you the z-score. All right, so we can just double-click it, okay, and you can see that they want the z-value, and in this case, our z-value is 1.23. So we'll enter in 1.23, all right? And then cumulative, here we're going to type it in to be true, okay? Uh, the, cum the cumulative is a logical value for the function to return the cumulative distribution function equals true, and the probability density function equals false. Uh, and in all of these, you're going to you're going to set it equal to true. It's it's going to be very seldom that you use false, and I'm not I'm not going to go into the one for being false. And so we'll enter in true and hit OK, and there's the probability. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. All right, so let's get rid of this. All right, so now we want to calculate the area to the right of z equals negative 0.34. So let's just go ahead and draw a picture of it. Here's mu equal 0. And we have a z-score 
of negative 0.34 and we want the area to the right okay now remember that Excel gives us the area to the left of this value so the the total area under the curve is 1 so if Excel gives us this area here to the right, that's what Excel gives us, okay? Then if we do 1 minus this area, that'll give us the area to the right, okay? So let's go ahead and enter that in. Alright, so let's go back up here and insert our function, the norm s dist, and our z-score is negative 0.34. And we enter true. and hit enter okay so what did this do this gave us the area see I did the norm s dist that gives us this area so to find the area to the right we come up here and modify the formula and we're gonna type in 1 minus 1 minus that and that'll give us the area to the right and we hit enter and you can see that gives us an area of 0.633072 okay now what about the area between two z values well let's look at that okay so let's get rid of this Okay, there's our mean, and then we have negative 0.26 and 1.56. All right, all right, so we're looking for this area here between these two values okay so let's go ahead and enter the formula all right so so what they want what they want is this area so if we take the area to the left of 1.56 okay so if we put in the norm s dist for 1.56, that's going to give us the area to the left of 1.56. And if we put in negative 0.26, that's going to give us the area to the left there. So if we take if we take this entire area to the left of the curve and subtract off this area, then it'll just leave us with this area here under the curve. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm going to come up here to my function and the norm s dist. All right, so the z score is 1.56. And I'm going to enter in true and hit enter. Okay, so that's the area to the left of the 1.56. Okay, and then let's take the area to the left of negative 0.26. Okay, so let's hit the norm s dist and that's going to be 
negative point two six and then I'll enter in true and hit OK. So this is the area to the left of negative point two six. And so the total area, so we're going to come in here and I'm going to just do this minus this. And so I can come here, hit equals, and then that's going to be this value minus this value. And then I'll hit enter. And so there's your area between negative 0.26 and 1.56. All right, so now let's go to the other problem. Now, this the video is starting to run a little long, so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this first one here, and then the other ones are going to be similar. And the way that you calculate the uh, probabilities of the less than, greater than, and between, it's going to be just like I did these. You know, the less the less than would be to the left, the greater than would be to the right, and then of course the between would be like this one. All right, so let's just look at this one, less than 400. So it says scores on the GMAT are approximately normally distributed. The mean is 540 with a standard deviation of 100. For the following exercises, find the probability that a GMAT test taker selected at random earns a score in the given range using the normal distribution as a model. All right, so let's do let's just do the first one, less than 400. All right, so you know that you would have to use this formula here to convert this 400 to a z-score. So to do that, to do that, you would have z equals 400 minus the mean which is 540 over the standard deviation 100. All right, and this would give us a, a z-score of negative 1.4. So then what you would do is you would find the area under the standard normal curve for z less than negative 1.4 and that would be worked just like we did this first problem here to the left of z equals 1.23 okay and um, and of course if you're taking a test if you're taking a test you know you're going to have to convert this to a z-score because you more than likely you're not going to have Excel on your test okay uh, so that's how you would convert it to a z-score but Excel has a function to where you don't have to do that all right so let's go ahead and draw the standard normal curve all right and here the mean is 540 okay and we're looking for less than 400 so 400 would be right here and we're looking for the area to the left now the way that we would do this is use a different uh, Excel formula. All right, so if you let me get this out of the way. If you recall, in the first examples, we used the norm S dist, okay, and that was when we had a Z score. But this time we don't. They give us the X values, so we insert the function and we're not using the norm s dist 
Let's see, let's scroll down here. We're going to use the norm dot dist. Okay, see it asks for the x value, the mean, and the standard deviation, and the cumulative that would be true in this case also. And and also you notice in in this uh, in this formula list, it has a norm dist instead of a norm dot dist, and a norm s dist instead of a norm dot s dot dist. What these are, these are in there. These functions are available available for compatibility with Excel 2000 and earlier. So if you have Excel 2000 or earlier, you would you know the functions would be this instead of the dot in there. All right. So let's go back to the one we want. We want norm dist. Okay. All right. So our x value is 400. Okay. So we would type in 400. Our mean is 540. Our standard deviation is a hundred, so we'll enter in a hundred, and the cumulative. Once again, we'll type in true, and then we hit enter, and that would be point zero eight zero seven five seven. Okay, and, and I'll just show you. Remember the. Uh, Remember the when we converted this to a Z score, it was negative one point four. All right, well, let's just go ahead and and do that one real quick. If we had the Z score, okay, and you'll see that we get the same value. So that's negative one point four. Cumulative, or we'll enter in true and hit OK and you can see it gives us the same value alright so I hope this video's helped uh, sorry it was so long but I uh, hope you liked it and I hope it helped uh, if you like the videos you can watch my other ones and you can subscribe alright thanks